Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today is April 16th, which means we just got back from the farm where you live a bit in Asheville, North Carolina on April 15th. Now, I had a great opportunity to interview Joel Salatin on Meat Rabbits. I've done this before at another Farm Where You Live event. And when given the opportunity again, I sat down with him again and asked a few new questions. So if you have not seen my first interview with Joel Salatin about Meat Rabbits, make sure you go and watch that. I will link it down in the comments down below. That was from last year. I have some updated questions for him this year. So we're gonna get into that video. But first, I want to show y'all something that's pretty cool. So let me show you what y'all are looking at. This right here is Flar. He is our breeding buck. These kits are not his. And like, they're not his kits. He's not the daddy. But obviously they're not his because he's not the mama either. They have taken and dug out right here a hole that goes under the divider and comes up the other side. And they like to go back and forth from their mom to Floor, even though he's not related to them in any way. Anyway, these kids are four weeks old. He has not hurt them. He has not bit them. He cuddles with them. He allows them to eat his food. He takes care of them. When they want milk, they tunnel back under and go to their mom. Now this rabbit tractor moves every single day, every single day. And they dig a new path every single day under the rabbit tractor to get from their mom to Flar. Do you see him grooming that kit? Whoa. It is so funny. For anybody who tells you if you like colony raise your rabbits or anything that your buck will kill your kits, I have tried to dispel this myth over and over and over. And as you can see, an unrelated buck who is side by side with their mom, unrelated, did not try to kill those kids. If your buck is trying to kill your kids, you have a bad buck or you have an issue in your spacing, your colony, things like that. So I just want to get that out there while I have proof on camera that an unrelated buck, unrelated to these kids, has no relation to them in any way, still did not kill them when they invaded his space. And at one point in time, all of them, all four of them, were over there with him. <laughs> he just cuddles with them. They like to sleep with him at night. It's hilarious. But anyways, off topic. Glad y'all got to see that on camera. Now, let's get to our interview with Joel Salatin. Now, I know polyface rabbits have made like their own breed now. Like I keep hearing people say, I've got polyface rabbits, I've got polyface. What breed of rabbits did you start with? So when Daniel started, so this is our son's project. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't and know. I know I was hoping he would get I, here so I could I, talk I, to him. I, I don't about know it. anything about rabbits, but he started with um, with a California okay. and a Dutch um, Dutch rabbit, which is a small, uh -huh. and uh, a New Zealand white. That's an interesting three, mix. Three different, yeah, three different things. Well, it, it just uh, it wasn't a plan. Yeah. Uh, he just got these rabbits from a. A family friend that was moving from the country to the city, and the city wouldn't let him. Would the new apartment wouldn't let him have rabbits, uh -huh. and so they had to have a place to go. Daniel was eight, and you know he was interested in them, and so he ended up with the rabbits. So, did he do them for like 4-H or something, or he just wanted yes, rabbits? Yes, he did. Well, he, he didn't do it for 4-H, but he did. He did eventually join 4-H, okay. and, and, and rabbits were his project. Yeah. Um, I have an idea that's what that one's going to end up doing is 4-H and showing rabbits considering yeah. our whole life revolves around rabbits, yeah. might as well. Yeah. Well, now he never, he never showed rabbits. Okay. He just did the project books, just, you know, because okay. we were always in the, you know, in the, in the meat end of it. And mm -hmm. so he, he, you know, dressed them and sold yes. the rabbits. So when you butcher your rabbits, what weight do you think they get to? I uh, dresses them at 12 weeks. Okay. And they normally run just a, a, a scotch under three pounds dressed. Okay. Three pounds carcass. So that's pretty good. So they're, you know, they're in the five and a half pound live range. Mm -hmm. And y'all feed pellets and do we rabbit do. tractors. Yes. Okay. Yes. I know the rock, the rocking house y'all have is like well known for my book that I'm coming out with, uh, the Homesteader's Guide to Raising Rabbits. 
I had a bunch of people submit pictures in for it, and a lot of pe people have done racket houses. I got all kinds of pictures, so that has huh. made a huge splash. People are loving that yeah. idea. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, the beauty of it is that there's no smell. Yes. I mean, normally in a rabbitry, I mean, rabbits are fastidious. People don't realize how fastidious they mm -hmm. are. They, they pick a spot and they go in that spot all the time. Absolutely. And, and rabbit urine is strong. Mm -hmm. It is strong. And um, and so by having them on, you know, on up, uh, uh, where it's going on deep bedding, carbon, uh, we call it the carbonaceous diaper, uh -huh. uh, that the chickens can, can continue to, to uh, stir and, and make it compost. Um, there's you know there's no smell so that's a that's a real you know it, it makes it makes the rabbitry a, a much more pleasant place to be yes. and, and, and it's hygienic for the rabbits because that ammonia is not coming up into their nostrils and, and you know rabbits are real prone to, to respiratory issues yes they are and um, and so the, the chickens keeping that ammonia vapor from going up into the rabbits is is keen really helpful to keep the rabbits um, you know, healthy. And we've kind of, we don't have a racket house. We have a colony and we have rabbit tractors, but okay. we've still in your deep litter method and done it in the colony and that works really well. And then I clean it out twice a year and throw it into the chicken bin and they go through and compost it for well, me. Well, that's great. So do you have a dirt floor? Mm -hmm. Yep. Have a dirt floor. So they dig around into the dirt? No, we have fencing laid down so they can only dig down so far oh. and they can't go any farther. Oh, okay. And then okay. I filled it in and then we just do a deep well, litter do, method with hay. Do you think that, uh, now we have a concrete floor yep. in ours because we have pigs in there in the, in the summer. Yeah. Time. Um, I, I'm sorry. In the winter time, in the winter time, in the, in the summer, it's the it's the rack and it's the chickens and, and rabbits. But in the winter, um, the rabbits and chickens go in a hoop house, mm -hmm. and the pigs go in and they then stir up, finish stirring up what the chickens didn't. Um, but we have we have concrete in there. The rabbits you think would tunnel into the concrete and make their burrows. I mean, it's you know it's this deep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how deep do rabbits burrow? Rabbits can go six feet deep, and they usually do ten six feet long. Six feet. Yeah. yeah, they can go six feet deep. Wow. And they dig d fast. But but the the litter so the the litter doesn't fall in doesn't cave in on them. Mm -mm. No, with the way I think it's just how they dig because they compact the dirt around them, oh, so it creates a okay. good tunnel. We have found them because ours can dig a foot and a half deep and we have found them on accident by stepping in one and it falls and you would be amazed at how deep it is. And they could do it so fast before you even know it. And if your rabbit is having kits, you she will bury deep, the how deep, how deep or how long it is? Both. Both. They can go ours. Because your kids only go 18 inches yep. deep. And they would dig the whole 18 inches. But if you don't yep. have that in, they would dig six feet deep and 10 feet long to burrow. Wow. But we have man-made burrows because I don't like the idea of kits dying in their mm. burrows and you not being able to clean it out. Uh, we are okay. very, we weigh our rabbits at birth at day one, two, three, and then every week after that. So if they don't meet my, my growth curve, they don't stay as breeders. We are, I'm very strict about how I breed my mm. rabbits. So. so you're able to, but you're able to keep up with which, which kits go with which doe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ones in my colony, I try to do separate colors so that their litters are separate colors so I know them. So I have like a white rabbit and a black rabbit ah, in there. okay. And they're bred right. specifically yeah. so I can tell everything. Well, our rabbits are, are you know, they're Yeah, they're y'all have a multitude of colors. All different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our biggest, um, I mean, my biggest, whatever, desire uh, for the rabbits right now, I would like to get to where we can uh, do the hides. Yes. But that's a, that's a, you know, Daniel's done some brain tanning. He's done some, you know, some um, uh, alum album yep. tanning mm -hmm. as well man that is a that's yeah. that's a real project i'm know? trying to learn and i've tried the brain tanning and the egg tanning which is similar to brain uh -huh. tanning. i just can't quite it does take a lot of work yeah yeah i just can't make it worth it right now i throw the hides to the chickens and the flies will come and lay their eggs oh, in it yeah. and the chickens tear oh yeah up, the same, same here we yeah we we, we uh, throw it all away but mm -hmm. man these these multicolored uh, yeah, they're uh, so pretty. Hides are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. They're just gorgeous, and you just and boy, they're you know when you butcher, you know when you stick your hand in there, yep. and that, there is nothing soft like a rabbit. I know it's so hide. soft. It's so soft, and uh, boy, the idea of having a man having a coat like that, oh my! And we do a lot of New Zealand white, so we could potentially dye that fur yeah, if I could, could figure out how to tan it and get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's on our list because our list is to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So with ours, we feed a lot from our garden and our property, and we mm -hmm. feed them for free, so we don't yeah. do commercial pellets. Mm -hmm. And then they feed the garden and the property with their pellets. So, and they feed us. If yeah. I could just get the fur worked in, we would be like yeah. pretty much yeah. completely. Yeah, well, you figure it out, and then we'll 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 copy you. Absolutely. We're, we're all we're all into that. 
Now our our uh, our bunnies, you know, Daniel takes them. He he weans them at at six weeks, uh -huh. and takes them out into the into the hairpins yep. out on the pasture, and they they reduce their pellet use by about uh, seventy percent. It, yeah. it's it's it pretty is amazing. Big. It's pretty big, and uh, one other thing that we do that um, for years now have talked much about it, but we prune our all of our uh, fruit trees, uh -huh. all the little tw the prunings. They go into rabbits, yeah. and the rabbits eat that bark off, and they love that that gnawing, that yeah. that fibrous. And it's so good for their teeth. It, it's really good for their teeth. Yeah, yeah. So that that's a that's a real that's a real benefit. Too. We are building up all of our trees. I'm planting willow trees and ah, what's called uh -huh. a moringa tree, all for our animals. They make great fodder. So yeah. yeah, our goal is to eventually have all of our animals completely pellet free, all mm -hmm. off our own forage. We don't have pigs yet because they'll take a lot of forage. But we're will. getting there. Yeah, even one one pig would eat as much as. Whatever. You know, I told him I gotta get a cow. Rabbits. Yeah. I need a cow so I can feed the extra milk to the pig to help with the forage. Yeah. It'll work. Well, you out. know, you know, back in back in the day, you know, in the 1800s, before mm -hmm. modern mechanization and chemical fertilizer, grain was so expensive that, that people couldn't feed it to, to yeah. omnivores. Um, and so they had to, you know, they fattened on acorns and, and all this, you know, pigs and all that. And um, and back in that day. I mean, think think about the economics of a day when it was actually cheaper to have a cow, a, an herbivore, converting grass to milk, and then and then the milk feeding the pigs. In other words, yeah. that the milk milk feeding the pig was cheaper than buying grain to feed the pig. That is crazy. And, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a really neat. Uh, and that was that was the way it was, and you know, until very modern times. Yeah. That that's the way the economics worked. It is amazing how much we've changed recently, and people think that's the way that it's always been. Right. Rabbit pellets right. weren't created until like between 1924 and 1964. In that 40 year window, everybody right. converted rabbit pellets. Right. Because it was easy right. during World War II. Yeah. And that's, it took over. But that's they've right. been raised for thousands of years without that's pellets. That's right. Yeah. Rabbits, rabbits uh, did well without mm -hmm. them. And, you know, when, when Daniel started with his when he was eight, you know, this is back in, you know, in the 80s. Um, you know, about 1990, um, you know, half of them died because they were so far away from forage, they got yeah. diarrhea all the time. Yes. So it took literally generations mm -hmm. of breeding to breed that, you know, out of them. And that's what we're focused on is breeding rabbits that thrive on forage. Mm -hmm. So next year I'm hoping to have our own line available to sell to people. So are we expanded our rabbitry this year? We're getting there. That's cool. That is really cool. Well done. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I got to sit down and talk with you again. It's always fun to see you at these events. Yep. Farm where yeah. you live is like one of our favorites. Yes, it is. It's a fantastic, fantastic fair. Yep. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Now, if y'all have never heard of Joel Salatin, all I can say is how, because Joel Salatin Polyface Farms has been like forerunning this homesteading farming movement for years. Polyface Farms rabbitry program is where I have learned a lot like I went to their farm I have a video on that somewhere where we toured polyface farms and I like studied their rabbit trees their cages and their rocking house their breeding pens that they had their rabbit tractors like before we really got gung-ho into rabbits I went and studied what they had going on and every book that I can find on rabbits I've read and I have Joel Salatin's books and I have read their sections on rabbits and anytime I get a chance to talk to Joel Salatin I'm like hey give me all the rabbit information because I want to soak it in like a sponge so when I was given this opportunity to sit here and sit down and talk with him I enjoyed it and took full advantage of it I hope to see Daniel Salatin in the future at an event he really is is like the father of the rabbitry program at Polyface Farms and as Joel said in this video Daniel Salatin started the rabbitry program as a child he started it as a child now as an adult Polyface Farm rabbits are actually sold as their own breed of course it's not an ARBA standard breed because it's not like I don't know it's not like a breed specific they are just bred for meat and have been repeatedly over generations for many 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 years so people gravitate towards them because they know those rabbits are healthy hearty rabbits that produce meat um so that is awesome that he took three rabbits 
that are not even similar in their breed types like that it just blows my mind that that's what he used as his starting rabbits and got to where he is today yes that took many many years and many generations to get there so if he can do it with rabbits that just don't even go great together and get to where he is just think of where you can be if you start out with better quality meat rabbits you can get there much faster but you can breed fantastic quality meat for your family so i hope you enjoyed this small snippet of a talk that i got with joel Selaton. i did try to film the talk i gave on raising rabbits so i hope to have that up for y'all on saturday i'm not sure how much of it got on camera and how much of it didn't because obviously i was up there talking not filming but i set up my camera so i'm hoping i got a lot of it i will get to you what i can so until then friends bye i'll see you later